everyone welcome to our channel rebecca stew and the crew i'm rebecca and today we have some dollar tree diys for you guys for some summer craft ideas so let's go over our supplies using items from the dollar tree for the first project we're going to need some craft floral foam we're also going to need these wicker balls that come in several different sizes and different colors from the dollar tree their new seashell sets that they have out with the sand dollars and sea stars they also have these green picks out with some seahorses and seashells their little baskets in the nautical section they come in two different styles that i've seen so far and some of this driftwood so let's get crafty the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take some of that craft foam and a floral pick we're going to bend that wire up towards the top to make it a little bit wider and then stick that down into our craft foam then we can start adding things to the basket so i like to to alternate between all the different supplies that I'm using and then that way I'm able to kind of move it around and I'm also able to make sure that I don't get too many of one thing uh, like all clumped together in one section if that makes sense you really want to just sporadically put your pieces throughout your arrangement that way they're not all clumped together so if I feel like that something's being clumped together or something doesn't fit then I can just arrange it if you like when you're all done figuring out where all your pieces are going to go you can take some hot glue and glue the pieces down into the spaces that you want them to be in. But if you're not really worried about it being moved around or knocked over, then that is not necessary. So this, like I said, this is really easy. You just can play with it, move it around until you figure out where everything should go. But I saw all these new pieces that they have out the Dollar Tree they just put out this week. And I was really excited to use the pieces in some different crafts for this week for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy this little flower arrangement. Like I said, it's very simple, but it's very pretty. I just love the way it looks and it will match perfectly with my bathroom that's decorated in a nautical beach theme. And so here's some close-ups of the different pieces that they have out at the Dollar Tree and then the finished product. And now for our second craft, let's go over the supplies first. So we are going to be using two Dollar Tree stretched canvas. These are five by seven, some more of their new sand dollars and sea stars. You can either use hot glue or a staple gun. Paint, paintbrush, a screwdriver, and a razor blade. We're going to need some raffia and some burlap and these pearls. Also, we're going to use some craft paper for the back. So let's get crafty. So this is another pretty easy craft to do. What we're going to do is we're going to take our screwdriver and lift up the staples that hold the canvas on. Now, we're not going to use the canvas, but we will keep it because we could always use it in another project down the road. Then we'll lay our frame on top of the burlap and we're just going to cut along the side to get two pieces for both of our frames. And we do want to cut it a little bit larger than necessary so we have plenty of material to work with. Now we'll set that aside so we can paint the frame. So painting the frame, of course, is optional. You can paint it white. You can do like a blue color that would match really pretty. Even gray would work here. Or you could stain it or just leave it natural the way it comes. It looks nice either way. Now these are kind of porous, so I ended up using a couple coats of paint. Mainly, I think, because I was using the Dollar Tree acrylic paint, which is kind of thin. If I was using like a chalk paint, I don't think it would have taken as many coats as I put on uh, the picture frames today, but I think I put on about three coats to make it uh, full coverage. So they're quite porous and the paint's kind of thin. So then we'll let these dry. And of course you want to make sure that you're painting the inside and the outside. It's not really necessary to, cut, to paint the back as we will cover those with the craft paper. So while these are drying, or once they're dry, we're going to take that burlap and we're going to start stapling it onto the back of our frame. You want to do the corners first and really pull the burlap tight so it's nice and tight without any ripples or waves in the fabric. And I like to work my way slowly around the picture frame, doing the ends first and then flipping it over to do the sides. And you always want to make sure when you're pulling it that you're not pulling too much and that way you have enough fabric left on the opposite end to staple or glue into place. Then take your scissors and just um, trim the excess burlap off of the sides. And as you can see, this is pretty porous. You can see right through it. So that's where our craft paper is going to come in handy. 
So now we're going to take that craft paper, lay our frame right on top of it and just trace around it. Or you can add some glue to the frame and just glue it right to the paper and then trim around the frame. I like to measure and make sure that I have enough paper that it's large enough to fit the back. If you need to trim it at all, then go ahead and do that. But go ahead and just add some hot glue and then attach your paper to the back. And this will help blend in with that burlap and not make the burlap so see-through. That way your wall color will not shine through the burlap and change the look of your design. And of course, we'll do this for both of our frames, but just see the difference how the one frame you can see through and that little bit of paper just makes a huge difference. Now I'm just going to play with my frames, kind of move them around and decide which direction I want these to go to finish this project off. I decided to use them in the horizontal, so we'll go ahead and add some hot glue to the shells and then glue those right to the center of the frame. And these shells are quite light, so the hot glue is plenty to hold these in place. And then you can finish it here if you like, but I decided to add a little bit more. So I'm taking this blue raffia. I picked up at Dollar Tree about a year ago. Any raffia will do. You can even use twine here. And we're just going to string on three medium-sized beads and one large bead and then three more of the medium beads. So it's seven in all. And that is plenty to fit right in the corner of each of the frames, of the frame's corners. My cat, of course, is helping me with the beads as usual. He's always my helper. And as you can see, we're just going to place these right in the corner. So I'm taking a small dot of glue and gluing the raffia down to the frame to help hold those pearls right in the place that I want them to be, which is in the corner at a diagonal. So once we get those glued down on the front, which is a small bead of glue, we'll pull that to the back cut off the excess and then add a little bit of hot glue to make sure that these are going to stay in place. So I'm just using a little bit of glue. I still have a tad bit too much raffia, so I will end up trimming off some of the excess and then placing some glue right over top of the raffia that's attached to the back to make sure that this is really well glued down and it's not going to move over time. I really wanted to have a nice finished look on the back, so I'm going to take another piece of the craft paper and cut it down to size and glue it over top of the strands of raffia. Or just add some glue right to the back of the frame and then turn the frame over, glue it down to the paper, and then just trim around the frame to cut off the excess. And so we have a nice clean back. And then you can either just set these on a shelf or lean them against a wall, or you can add a hanger. So I decided to go ahead and add a hanger to mine. To add the hanger, you can just take a piece of twine and measure straight across. You'll knot both sides on the ends just to give you something a little bit bigger to help glue down. And when you glue the hanger onto the back, you really wanna make sure that you have it as straight as possible and as tight as possible. That way when you hang it, you have enough tension to keep the picture nice and straight and that way it doesn't tend to sway to one side or the other and be uneven. And we'll do this to both of our pictures. And that's it. So that's our second craft project done. And now for our third project, this is going to be a really simple project. And then we're going to add the one that we make here to the one that we just did for our fourth project. So I love these frames that I found at um, the Dollar Tree. We're going to also use that paint, craft stick, and or craft knife, and the razor blade. And then we're just going to do pretty much the same thing. We're creating a reversed canvas. We're going to, of course, keep that hanger that's at the top. They had these really nice sawtooth hangers in these frames. So I'm going to hold on to that to use in our fourth project. But we're just going to lift up those staples and pull them out of the frame. And then we will paint the frame. What I don't like about these pictures is that Unlike the stretch canvas as you can DIY to paint your own picture, these are usually made out of that particle board or MDF board, so it's not the real wood like the stretched canvas that you can DIY. I usually like those a little bit better, but if you paint them, you can't really tell the difference. It's not as noticeable that it's not real wood, um, but it's very porous, so it takes quite a few coats of paint. It really wants to suck up the paint as you paint it. Even the chalk paint tends to have a little bit of issues covering it in just one coat. 
but we do the top, we do the inside edge and the outside edge. And like I said, it'll take a few layers and you do want to let this dry in between each layer. Then just take some hot glue and glue all around the back of the frame once it's dry and all the paint has you know, been well covered onto the frame there. And you're just going to take that frame and line it up on the lines that you can see where it was wrapped around the picture initially and then press straight down onto your canvas and just take a craft knife or your scissors and you want to trim off the excess canvas. And once again, my little cat is helping me. He kept trying to run off with the pieces. He's so energetic. He always has to be where I am. So these are the pictures all finished. I just think they look a lot higher end than the way they initially came. And now we can use these in our fourth project. So let's see what we're going to do with these pictures we just made. So we're going to take these two and these two with the burlap. We're also going to use some glitter vinyl from Dollar Tree, some scissors and some hot glue and the craft paper. And we're also going to use these little garden clips that they sell in the garden section. So let's get crafty. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those garden clips and clip all of these frames together once we decide what our arrangement will be. These are great clips to use for crafting. And we're going to end up covering up that hole in the center because we're going to be able to see the wall color through it. And I really wanted it to blend in with the pictures that we have here. So that's why I chose the gold glitter vinyl paper. So as you can see, it lets us hold these together and flip them over quite nicely. Then we're going to take some hot glue and start gluing between the two pictures where the frames meet up together. So I first start initially with just a straight line of a bead of glue to help get those to be glued together. And then I add kind of like a zigzag of glue just to kind of keep them in place. Then you can remove those clips and go ahead and use your staple gun and staple the two sets of frames together. Then we're going to take that vinyl paper. We're not gonna remove the sticky back or the backing where the sticky part is because we're going to actually glue this face down so that we'll be able to see the gold paper through the design. So once we have the gold paper glued down, we'll just take a large piece of craft paper and completely cover the back and cut it down to size. Then take your, um, holder that they had in those pink pictures that we saved and you can go ahead and hammer that into the top so that you have a hook to hang this large wall display so that is our second and third project all put together to make this fourth larger wall design so now for our fifth project the supplies we're going to need from dollar tree will be some dollar tree crafter square fabric we're also going to use that raffia and some burlap We'll use this um, large mesh ribbon, some more of their sea stars, and one of the small wooden um, cutout like stickers. They also are going to be using some twine, or you could use um, the zip strips. It's really up to you, and the non-slip rug underlay, also the eight-inch wreath form. We'll need some scissors and some glue. So let's get crafty. So this is another easy project. It just takes about 30 minutes to complete start to finish. So what we're going to do is just cut strips of fabric. I opened up the fabric and I fold it so it's in a rectangle. And then I'm cutting strips that are about an inch and a half to two inches wide. It doesn't have to be a full two inches and it doesn't have to be exact. Once you get all of these pieces onto the wreath, you're not really going to be able to see a huge difference if it's a little bit off. So don't worry too much about the spacing. Just try to get it as close as possible. So we'll use two different colors of fabric and then we're going to use the um, this mesh underlayment for the rug. I thought it looked really pretty and gave it kind of a nautical look to it. So the scissors were sticking to it, which is kind of natural because it's made out of a material so it doesn't slip. So I just fold the material in half and then cut the strips. It just made it a little bit easier to fold it one more time and cut through it a little bit quicker. Once we have all the fabric cut into these strips, then we'll open it up, fold them in half, and we will cut them to get two pieces for each strip. For our burlap, we're going to cut these into five inch squares. All in all, I used 30 squares of the burlap. We use 10 for each section and there's three sections of the frame for the wreath. The cat was very playful today. He kept trying to run off with all my craft pieces. <laughs> 
Hope you guys enjoy seeing him. He's always up in these videos, entertaining all of us. Okay, so now that we have all of our burlap and all of our pieces cut down, we're just going to loop these around our frame. So I completely fill in the first row using the alternating pattern of the striped ribbon, the blue fabric, and then the mesh underlayment for the carpet. And we go all the way around and complete the first layer. And we just use the knot method. And then we'll flip this over, make sure everything's on nice and straight. And now we'll do the last ring. So there's three rings in all. We're not going to do anything with that third ring. Just take your square and you're going to fold two corners in, loop it around, fold it in half to kind of create these little bunny ears and then tie it off with your twine. Or you can use a zip strip. Either one will work. And like I said, you want to use 10 pieces for each section and that will fill it in quite nicely. If it feels like you're running out of space, just make sure you really push those pieces aside and squish them together so you get a nice full wreath in the back there. So then take your raffia and make a bow, just making a bunch of loops and then binding them together in the center. And then you'll take your mesh ribbon and create four large pieces so that you can create four loops and then bunch them together in the middle to create the back of the bow. So I gather all four loops together and then I'll tie it off with a piece of raffia and I'll leave some strings longer so that I can tie the blue bow that we just made to the center using the same piece that I tied off the white ribbon with. And I took one of those uh, small wooden uh, craft pieces. I found a dolphin. I painted it gray and we'll glue that to the middle of our bow. And here's what the bow looks like. Now we're just going to take the um, hot glue and glue our ribbon to the top of the frame, the wreath frame. Then I take my starfish and I arrange them on the wreath because I'm not really sure where I want them to go. And I wanted to make sure that the, the amount that I had picked would be enough to fill it in and not look like it was too much. Once I figured out the spacing, then I just went ahead and attached them to the wreath using hot glue. And then you can add a hanger to the back if you like, or if you have one of those hook wreath hangers that hang on the door, you could probably just loop it onto that without a hanger on the back. I thought this would look really nice with all the different nautical items that we made today. And here is our finished wreath. And it was about 10 inches across. It's quite large once it was finished. And that's all of our projects today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.